Hello. Today we're talking about St. Ignatius' rules for the sermon of spirits. And it's basically uh, a set of guidelines on how to listen to God's voice within our hearts. And um, it's a very practical uh, methodology, a way of life even. And it's also a way of making decisions. If you want to keep in touch, uh, please make sure to subscribe. Without further ado, let's talk about it. <laughs> How does God move us when God is trying to call us to himself? St. Ignatius acknowledges in the spiritual exercises that uh, sometimes we need extra tools. So St. Ignatius help us compiling about 1,500 years of Catholic tradition in this topic. The first thing is that we need a roadmap, and we need to know where we're situated. Are we moving in one direction or in another? So the first thing is to situate ourselves, see where we're walking towards, right? Uh, we will be answering, how does God move me interiorly? That's how God speaks within us. To some people is very strong, some is maybe less, but we can identify it. How does God move me? Uh, these are kind of inner motions of our soul or an, of our inner life. So first Ignatius says, when somebody's going from bad to worse in the spiritual life, meaning uh, from minor sins to bigger sins, well, God is going to feel very differently. It's going to move us very differently because God is going to get us to try to move towards Him. So we need to change direction. And it's going to feel very different than when we're going from good to better. There, God is going to be very attractive. It's going to feel very good. Uh, so we're going from bad to worse. How does the evil spirit feel? How does the good spirit feel? So Ignatius also calls the evil spirit the enemy of our human nature. Those attitudes are self-destructing. Well, Ignatius says, the evil spirit moves us to imagine greater and more apparent pleasures. They're apparent because uh, they're only in the short term. Uh, and uh, and we're trying to imagine, you know, what, what more we can get if we got this little bit. So if you think, for example, of power or, or somebody that lies or addictions, why do people do it? Well, because there's something they're getting. <laughs> and every time you get it, even if it's a little bit, a little pleasure with an addiction, well, next time you think, what if I drank, drank a little more? What if I smoke another cigarette? If I lied, you know, imagine uh, what else I could do if I manipulate the situation right, you know? If, and empower, you know, what if I crush somebody? If I yell louder, maybe they'll respect me more. Well, well they're apparent because this is no way to live. The real uh, situation is that when you have an addiction, you're a slave and you're struggling with all kinds of things in your life. And when you're lying, people find out and you start losing relationships. And you and then you live in anxiety because you got to remember what lie you said to whom. You're always anxious. And when you're seeking to destroy and, and use power, um, crushing people, when you start isolating yourself, people might admire you, but you're by yourself. Well, the good spirit, how does God move? Says, well, First, we're able to see the truth of our situation. We see the consequences. How does my action, how do my actions may hurt other people? Or myself, how am I hurting myself with this that I'm doing? Or realizing I'm not the person that I wanted to be. This is not who I want to be. Uh, There's a difference between guilt and shame. Uh, shame is not from God. Shame is basically something that says, I am a horrible person. I am so terrible. You know, I should hate myself. Well, that's not how God moves. A healthy sense of guilt is, I did this thing that is wrong, and it's hurting others. It's hurting myself. I can change it. So it's just, there's some distance between me and what I do, and that's why I there's a sense of hope that I can change it. Right. So God might be a little uncomfortable. Like this realization of my, my true situation might not be comfortable. Uh, and, and, the, and the other one 
kind of going deeper into my sin might feel pleasurable. I want to relish in these thoughts. And so when I'm go- going in that direction, God might feel uncomfortable and the evil spirit kind of kind of cozy. But uh, it's different when somebody's already kind of on the way, searching God. Most people, I would think, they're listening to this because uh, they're going from good to better. So how does God move when we're going from good to better? St. Ignatius says, it's a cluster of interior uh, motions that he calls consolation. And he has a list. Uh, in, the full list is not in the spiritual exercises. Yes, it's, it's somewhere else. It's um, the directories. Uh, it's basically some instructions he gives when he is giving the exercises. It's a 10-pager. If you're into uh, Ignatian spirituality and you teach this, go look it up. Marty Martin Palmer, Marty Palmer put out a book, uh, and it's all in there. Well, uh, it's called the Directories, and he has this list. It's very simple. Uh, how Ignatius talked about what this cluster of interior emotions are: interior peace, we're able to breathe deeply and be at ease interiorly, not a lot of uh, rushing in my mind. Spiritual joy, when I'm able to enjoy life, enjoy relationships, and soak up life. Even tears of consolation. These are tears when somebody says, like, Father, I was tearing up, but I wasn't sad. <laughs> or somebody going to confession, they start tearing up, and, and they realize they're feeling great. <laughs> well, uh, they might come from a sense of being overwhelmed, a sense of awe before God, of being loved, compassion, it's a rush of emotion. It might even be because of my sins, a sense of conversion. Uh, but it, it, it comes with endorphins and we feel great. And uh, an elevation of our mind to God. We might be looking at a sunset, like talking to a friend, and we say, thank you, God. Well, this is consolation. And every increase of faith, hope, and love. Mm, so that's like a summary. Every time I can consider others being in love, uh, think of a bright future because God is with me, or or when I uh, get closer to to anything related to God or faith, well, that's that's where God is. Now, desolation is basically the opposite. Instead of inner peace, it's agitation, uh, rushing thoughts, ruminating thoughts. Instead of uh, spiritual joy, is just a sadness, ruminating and feeling sorry for myself. Uh, dryness. So instead of tears of consolation, t- tears are wet. And as Ignatius says, dryness is the opposite. And it's really because uh, tears are, are a way of emoting, uh, showing emotion. And dryness is the opposite. Numbness could be another way of describing it, where I just don't feel anything. A limited sense of vision, uh, unable to find meaning in things, and unable to find God in things. It's a limitation of our vision. And, and basically finding ourselves without faith without love, just going to self-focus what what I don't have, what what I need, what others owe me, what others haven't done for me. That's uh, uh, without love and without hope. Worried about the future. The world is terrible. I can't trust anybody. Things are going to end up worse than, than they've been. So uh, that's desolation. Now, why is this important? Because uh, when I'm in one of those... I can do something about it. When I'm in desolation, St. Ignatius says, you open up a protocol. And what do you do when you're in desolation? The first thing, don't do major changes. Don't quit your job. Don't uh, insult your friends. This is not the moment. Don't do major changes. Except what you could do, and it will be very good in terms of changes, is anything that moves you against the desolation. Where do you normally find God? Where do you know God is, even if you don't feel it? Like the Eucharist, like the sacraments, Scripture, accept those changes. St. Ignatius says, look at what was the source. Was it because of your own uh, being away from God for so long? Or, or, or is it something else? Because become aware that it could be uh, a good desolation. Realize that God is still there. Consolation is something where is how God normally moves us interiorly, but that's not how God always moves. So God is still there even if I don't feel it. 
right? right? Even if I don't have this interior experience, which is a gift from God to attract us to himself. Uh, but that might not always be there. So God is still there even if I don't feel it. Uh, and this could be a time of spiritual maturity uh, because I realize that I see that I'm not seeking uh, consolation, but I'm seeking God, God's self. And another thing why it could be a good thing is that I realize that I can't cause my own consolation. I always want to feel peace, but I can't. <laughs> and I realize it's exterior to me. It's a gift from God. And also, in the Salation, St. Ignatius says, remember, consolation will come. God has been faithful. God will remain faithful. And it's super helpful. Have a spiritual journal. If you're in consolation, what do you do now? Well, first remember it. Because in desolation, you might feel like it never happened. Remember it. So a prayer proposal would be, how about you review the consolations of your life? Wouldn't that be enjoyable? <laughs> Write them down. Look them up when you need them. You know? How have you grown in your faith? Who first taught you to pray? Uh, where have you found hope in your life when things have been dark? Where, who has shown you care and love and mercy and compassion? Who are your friends and what are the great things you've done with them? Where have you found joy? Well, you write that down, you're going to need it. <laughs> That's like spiritual batteries. And become aware that desolation will come. It can't make it last forever. You're not God. It's a gift from God, right? Recognize it as a gift. So how to use this? First, this is like a, like a Google map. A Google map knows your endpoint and knows all the avenues. So it doesn't need to know exactly how to get there because there might be traffic on one end or another. Well, it just knows if I take this turn, it will get me closer faster, right? And this is kind of what um, this system allows us to do. I don't need to know where I'm going to end up in my life. <laughs> I just need to know that the next step is in that direction. Uh, this is like a metal detector. When I get closer to the right direction, it just beeps. Beep, 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 beep. There's more hope in this direction, more love. So in a conversation, I can decide to steer it in the direction of, let's talk about uh, so-and-so. I have some juicy stories, right? Uh, or I can just change the topic. If I start engaging in that negative conversation, when I end up more loving, probably not. Uh, more hope in the world, probably not. It just looks very bleak after that. Uh, faith, faith calls me to do that. Well, maybe it's not so charitable, right? Uh, maybe not. Inner dialogues. How do you talk to yourself? Hmm. Sometimes uh, we're our biggest critics. Sometimes we insult ourselves. Well, does that move you to more faith, hope, and love? Probably not. Uh, should you talk to yourself in a loving way? <laughs> How you see the world? You can... Uh, uh, I remember there was a Jesuit that lived above me and he used to wake up saying, Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have a great day. Well, what a great way to wake up. Versus another Jesuit that also I met and, and he would insult himself. He would try... He would speak terrible to himself. Well... Uh, what moves us in, in the direction of God, faith, hope, and love? Every decision that we make, we can ask ourselves, if I take this decision, am I going to be moving in greater faith, hope, and love, that direction? If I say hi to someone that I don't get along with, is there going to be more hope? Probably there's a hope that we can reconcile. Love, I'm thinking of them, I'm giving them another chance. Uh, faith, does the faith call me to do that? Well, I guess it depends if somebody is abusive and every time I get closer, they hit me. Well, uh, that's not very loving for me or for them. That doesn't do them well. Good for them, their soul to act like that. And, and for myself, I need to love myself also as I love others. <laughs> you know, uh, Hope, well, if it's abusive, well, no, it's not a sense of hope. Getting closer is going to get me hit. Uh, faith, the faith doesn't call me to do that, right? Faith holds me sometimes to denounce evil. And well, and that takes me to another point. This is not 
moving in the direction that feels good, okay? Constellation is different. So denouncing injustice is another example. Uh, if somebody's being sex sexist or racist or biased and mean to someone, well, if I don't say anything, it might, it might feel immediately more comfortable. If saying something might feel a little uncomfortable, right? Now, is it consoling to do it? For sure. When you do it, you're going to realize, even if initially it might be difficult to do it, feel, feel a great sense of satisfaction and of peace, and you do it out of love, and, uh, and, and the world seems like a better place, more hope. So, for sure. Loving always takes effort. It, not all, it doesn't always feel great to go out uh, and, and help someone else or, and think of someone else. Uh, everybody loves to eat cookies, but baking them takes effort, right? Uh, but it's worth it. So this is uh, how this helps us. You know, it's not always to do what feels good. It's really about doing what moves me towards greater sense of consolation. So this is it. That's how God moves. That's how you can start applying it. And I hope this has been of help. Uh, many blessings to you.